Hey, Trump, leave your teachers and students alone. Lily Eskelson Garcia, the president of the National Education Association, tells us how states should ignore Trump and DeVos. Check it out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Uh, just a quick uh, errata, a quick uh, correction of an error that I made. I, I was saying that um, uh, Michael Caputo, who was uh, uh, that, uh, it, it just in a, in a rant just a few minutes ago, I was saying that he was, uh, you know, he's now the new spokesperson for HHS. And I was saying that he worked on Bridgegate. That was, I was mixing him up in my head with Bill Stepien, who is now in charge of Trump's campaign. He was the guy who worked with Bill with uh, Bridgegate. Michael Caputo uh, is one of Roger Stone's best friends. <laughs> and, and so one of Roger Stone's best friends is now the head of, uh, you know, is the, the official spokesperson for HHS, uh, which is now getting all the data from the, uh, for, you know, that the CDC used to get. So it's, it's getting very, very bizarre. Anyhow, uh, I'm very pleased to have with us right now Lily uh, Eskelson, uh, Gar Eskelson Garcia, um, the president of the National Education Association, the NEEA. Uh, Lily's Twitter, Twitter handle is Lily, L-I-L-Y underscore N-E-A, or N-E-A today. And of course, NEA.org is the National Education Association's um, website. Lily, welcome to the program. Um, how is An honor how is to America be here. It is an honor to be here. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. How is America going to protect our children from Trump and DeVos? It, 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 this, this seems like it's, it's in particular going to fall, just like right now, uh, you know, uh, people with college educations, largely uh, affluent white people, can work from home, generally speaking, without a problem. They tend to have jobs where they can work from home. Um, uh, brown and black people, not so much, and poor and poor mm -hmm. white people as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and therefore, uh, people like myself who can work from home, I'm kind of insulated from this disease. I would think that that's probably true of kids as well, that the, the wealthy white kids who go to private schools that have now fancy distant learning programs and things like that, they're going to be fine. But the poorer kids, the minority kids, they're going to be pushed into schools. What? Uh, what? So, Where does this go? So here's... You know, I, I love your tone because everyone should be that exasperated. Um, the, the, we're, we're being given this false choice of, all right, look at our schools need to be disinfected and we, get, we need all these things to dis we, we have to do this. So we have these unsafe schools. Do we keep them closed or do we open the unsafe schools? wrong. <laughs> Those are not mm -hmm. your two choices. And I'm a sixth grade teacher uh, from the great state of Utah. I have had 39 sixth graders, 12 year old kids, all in this, you know, jam packed in that little room uh, with one working window uh, propped open on a, you know, when, when it's when it's 95 degrees outside. That was not safe and healthy before the pandemic. But uh, let me tell you, there is no one who wants those schools um, open and open safely more than America's teachers and the support staff that went away. So, okay, maybe their parents want them, <laughs> want them in school a little bit more than we do. But, but as a sixth grade teacher, and I represent over 3 million school teachers, then school secretaries, bus drivers, custodians, librarians, nurses, the whole, the whole village that serves that child. Any one of us is more qualified to know what we're talking about than Betsy DeVos. Um, and here we have a president who hesitated about you know, saying, well, it's not up to me to tell people to wear a mask. Of course, we are mystified and disturbed beyond disturbed to say that guy is the one that uh, just opened his mouth one day at a press conference and said, all schools, all students open on the same day. Kids pack into those schools just like they were. Don't talk to me about creative, you know, shifts and distancing and all of that. Just put them all back in there. Close the door because we need their parents back on the job. So warehouse the kids done here. Done. A man who has no authority to order school teachers or staff to do anything. No power to make the threat that he made by the way he said i'll take away your school your federal school funding 
Federal school funding is very little of the school budget, but it goes to our most vulnerable kids. It's special education. It's the school lunch program for poor kids. So he gets up there and says, I order you, I command you, without any resources to do it safely, um, I command all kids to be sitting shoulder to shoulder in those overcrowded classrooms uh, on the same day, uh, and and all kids, uh, all the time, all together. It was beyond reckless. It was mm. unbelievably dangerous. So you asked a question, what can we do? Uh, we can stop listening to Donald Trump and Betsy DeVos. Do not do not pay attention to a word that comes out of their mouths. Uh, who would have thought? You know, I, I, I. But I'm serious about this. I'm telling school board members. I'm telling panic teachers. He has no authority to command you to do anything, and he has no authority to threaten your vital funding for school services like special ed. So the first thing you do is just turn off the TV, stop listening to him. Um, and get to work on doing it right. Get to work on a plan that would make sense for your community. And it's going to look very different if you're in Detroit or if you're in a tiny little broken bow, Oklahoma. It's going to look very different because the infection rate in that community can be very different. Uh, because whether or not you have an overcrowded classroom or extra space you can use. And it's also going to look different because we are, um, well, we are in panic mode for this because we've mm. all been told now that just like a business where people stopped coming to the restaurant, people stopped shopping at the store, your revenue fell off. They went, looks like we're going to have to lay people off, maybe go bankrupt. That's happening to school funding around the country. Our, our school funding comes from tax dollars. And so if no one's, you know, the sales tax, the income tax, even the property tax, a third of people aren't making their, their mortgage payments or their rent payments. So the funding revenue to pay for schools has fallen off a cliff just when we need more because there is no disinfectant and face mask budget uh, in, in any school uh, district's budget. So we have been begging Mitch McConnell to take up the HEROES Act that was passed by the House. He went on vacation, said, I'll get around to it when I feel like it. He went on vacation, um, and he said, uh, first of all, you, you remember him saying when it was like, are you going to help local government? By the way, local government includes your local public school. He said, well, maybe they should go bankrupt. So instead of saying, we want to open schools safely when it's time and in the places where it's it's uh, safe to open them safely we need a plan to distance disinfect the ppe face masks and by the way the health screenings are are healthy people walking into that building um, instead of saying of course that's our priority how are we going to fund that he said no just just don't worry about it. Just open up the schools, put the kids back in the way they were. Um, and that jeopardizes their health. It jeopardizes the health of their teachers and all the support staff in that school. And some of our folks are starting to feel that we're being punished with, mm. uh, you know, we'll show you, we'll show you, we will, we will force you to go into well, these unsafe Betsy schools. DeVos has privatized half of the, of the, of the schools in, in my home state in Michigan. And, right. uh, you know, it seems hell bent for leather to do it to the rest of the country. And this would be a great way to destroy public schools. It, um, uh, in, in, one wonders, we have, by the way, about a minute and a half till we're going to hit a hard break. One okay. wonders if this is, uh, you know, if, if they're looking at this going, hey, an opportunity. This isn't just a problem. It's an opportunity. We can take well, down these public schools. You, you are absolutely spot on there. Uh, there has been nothing that Betsy DeVos has been involved in that hasn't been to say, is there a way to take public school students' dollars and funnel it to private schools and for-profit charters? And uh, again, that is that is what she's doing here. And it's open up. It, it really does feel like they are 
uh, well, if you were being generous, you'd just say it's idiotic to not have a plan. Um, that's being generous or sinister. They actually have a plan to create chaos and an unhealthy situation as the pretext to, oh, now, you know, we're going to have to all go to those online charter schools because there's lots of those getting funded, uh, especially in Michigan. Uh, But let's, you know, let's put it all online and we don't need that public school that is so unsafe because that was the plan. 